Hamsey. He's the founder yes, of Hamsey Analytics. He joins the show every Wednesday, <laughs> bringing his wealth and knowledge and aggressive options and in index futures trading. Fari, what do you think of this seesaw market here? Consolidation, we just gearing up for another move to all, all time highs. I mean, we have the uh, unenjoyment number on Friday. What are your Sigma channels telling you? Well, Sigma channels have been very flat. Yep. Uh, I'd say in the last seven to ten days. Prior to that, for about four or five days, they, they were ratcheting up and then they leveled. If you really step back, I mean, even if you look at like weekly, um, we haven't done much since, uh, let's say, early February. Uh, you know, we have had added a little bit of volatility and then sucked it out every time, you know, by one of the Fed uh, officers or Fed uh, members have uh, gave it a pep talk for the economy. Now, uh, the, the, the the durable goods came in bad. It was, this was on, the, it was on the hedge eye yesterday. Uh, you know, we've, uh, we've, the, 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 uh, the autos are doing well, but everything else you look at, it uh, you know, seems like we're in a late cycle, uh, a late uh, part of a business cycle. So, um, you know, I, I think we're just interest rate insensitive here. I, I don't know if we're going to drop a lot, but I think we're getting closer to uh, a, a, a relief of some pressure, you know, some you know, pullback. Look, the last three days we had huge MOCs at the close on the sell side. I, I don't. I don't remember seeing yeah. three days in a row. Yeah. You know, for a while, maybe. Uh, uh, then it's helping me out. Maybe it was in October we saw that. Yeah. But the, the not not days, recently. Like I was looking at the Dow 30 at the close, like on the MOCs, just breaking them down by the stocks. And I think like 28 right. of them had sell imbalances. So and pretty massive ones. Like General Electric was over a million shares. Most of them got paired off, so that means you know they right. didn't really drive the prices down that far. But there's still some early sellers in there. So buyers came in to match them. But still, that being said, there's somebody the last few days that's been wanting out. Yeah, at least at least maybe they're pairing off from you know, positions or or taking selected profits, but the sizes have been noticeable. You know, over uh, a billion each day, billion three. The yeah. yesterday I think it was nine eighty. Yeah. It's up there. Yeah, it's, it's noticeable. You cannot ignore that. So it, it, and then the, our canary in the coal mines, as I wrote on our uh, 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 you know market analysis uh, um, uh, Twitter. Um, if you look at the Russell and uh, transportation, this guy's giving, showing a different story, especially transportation. Now, I'm not a Dow Theory guy, but I do watch these two quite a bit, and SMBs are not going to go anywhere without these two cooperating. Uh, Russell has been slightly level, uh, and you can see it in the patterns of the uh, Sigmas. Sigma channels are kind of also level, but not for transportation. They've been pretty much heading down. So I think some chips will come off. Now, there was also um, a note from Merrill Lynch yesterday. But the more, a good number of hedge funds are short S&P futures. Now, I'm not saying they're always so right. So who's buying? But, that's the question. Who are these people that's buying that we keep coming right back? Like if everybody's uh, starting to you know, get a little bit more bearish and we're seeing sell action at the close, some of it. You got Merrill saying that a lot of hedge funds are short. Who's buying that's holding us up? Well, well, my cabbies are. They always ask me. <laughs> now, these days they're asking about, uh, you know, uh, have you looked at this stock? You know, that, that's, isn't that a, uh, possibly the sign of a top? Or the shoeshine boy at Union League. Now he's trying to show me that, you know, I'm in the wrong stocks. I said, okay, good. That's, this is it. This is it. Not the shoeshine boy has got to tell me that. So, I don't know. You know, it, it, it seems like, I mean, my own, some of my own friends who never touched the stocks, never, ever, they were always in real estate. They got, like in, in California, they got burned so badly, and then there was no liquidity. Nobody had. So it took them a while to get that liquidity, get confidence up. But now, now they want to rush into the market. And I'm saying dumb money is smart money. What are you guys doing? Why are you trying to come in now? Where, where, where were you last six years? And it's all oh, it was too risky. I thought, well, you buy on top, the risk is less. <laughs> I mean, so I, I think there, there may be some latecomers who are looking at this. 
Yeah. Uh, rates have not gone up. We've said rates will not go up by much even uh, in, in real terms. Um, where else are you going to get some yield? Yeah, that, Maybe they're forced to come in. Let's talk, I don't know. Let's talk oh, about true, true. yield and let's talk about interest rates. You know, Maybe the reason that uh, we, we haven't continued to blast off the new, all, new all-time highs again is, you know, the – a lot of the TLT, a lot of your interest things are saying interest rates are going up September, December. I mean, mm-hmm. also historically, the market has gone up a year to a year to two after they start to do any kind of interest rate thing. Do you think that maybe that's a little bit of the overhang in the market? They're just waiting for the for the Fed to do the first move, then the big sell off like in 2012, mm-hmm. then they come back in buying. Well. The key person in that area that researched the Fed and I measured it against the movement of the uh, Dow uh, Industrial or uh, more more recently in, in terms of SSBX uh, was uh, Dr. Zwick, Marty Zwick. And he looked for three Fed rate changes to the upside before the stocks started uh, 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 heading down if the Fed rate increases continued. Okay? And then historically, that's how the Fed operates. 25 cents or 50 cents, uh, either on the uh, discount rate and or the Fed funds rate is what they would play with. But that's historical level, and we were at the levels of four, five, six, seven percent, uh, you know, uh, Fed funds rate. We have not, we haven't had any interest rate changes since what 2007, I believe, or was the last one was 2006, I think. Last hike was 2006 uh, under uh, Dr. Bernanke. Uh, I think the, the issue is, is that correlation works or not? We're totally, we're a totally new environment. The bond market has never been this big. Mm-hmm. Bond market typically was 20 times the stock market. Now we have just the, just the government bonds or the government debt, uh, and which is uh, uh, what's in, in, in the national debt, has gone up 80 percent in the last six years, from 10 trillion to 18 trillion. Yeah. So the size of the bond market is massive. I wonder if we could apply the work, the great work that Dr. Zwick did to these days. So I, my, I would, uh, in my humble opinion, I would say we, there is no analog. Uh, it's going to be uh, tough to say, is it going to be two years? Is it going to be how many rate changes? And I think given that the debt size is so big, uh, I doubt we're going to have many uh, uh, increases, and also in absolute terms, they're going to be minor. Maybe, let's say this, maybe in three years we'll go up 2%, you know, a little quarter here, a quarter there, and the Fed could be a champion and say, at least in the PR of the world, oh, we did raise interest rates. But we're, I don't think we're going to go back and see uh, the, 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 the 6 and the 7 and the 8 in the uh, Fed no, funds rate. Can. No, I don't yeah. think we can either. And that's why, yeah. like, you wonder if it's a still, you know, even if you get a pullback in equities, there's so much, you know, looking for income and looking for and where to put your money that you got to think if you pull back, there's going to be poor, more people ready to pour back in. Exactly. They're the buy the dippers. Yeah, that, and that is the buy the dippers. You got a lot of institutional money that maybe is sitting on the sidelines missing it. And every time we pull back one or two percent, they put more money to work. So maybe that is who's been holding us up here is those institutions that are sitting with cash. Yeah. Well, look, look at the overnight right now. We did, we did three big days, okay? And now we're up nine handles. Now, of course, you know, what's happening pre-market is not that they're going to necessarily dictate what kind of day we're going to have. But there, there we go again. Right now we're up 10 now. And we were another four points higher uh, you know, earlier. I mean, just maybe another, I, I don't, I'm not seeing time here, but let's say about, uh, oh, here we go. About an hour ago, we were not four points higher. You know, we had three days of a push down. Uh, one day, that was not yesterday, day before, before Monday. Monday, we went back and forth quite a bit intraday. Well, Friday was a good close on the downside. And uh, now we're up 10 handles. Fari, so maybe the three days has happened. We're on the line with Fari Hamzi, founder of Hamzi Analytics. Fari, I'm going to go rapid fire here on a few tickers, and I just want your your Sigma channels here and your 
best uh, your best advice for anybody, long, short, or looking at these issues. First one is Please. Amberilla, A M B A, the component maker for uh, GoPro, blasting off here in pre market trading, made uh, a new all time. Would, would you give me the symbol again? A M B A. M B L B A. Okay, M B A. Yeah. Huh. Apple, Mary, uh -huh. Bravo, yeah, 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 Apple. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got it. A, a M B I got you. Uh, okay, it was fairly quiet until uh, a couple of weeks ago. It look, looks like uh, this was a, on a daily basis. Uh, on the fourteenth, it broke out and it just you know it's been up 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 another two two point seven percent right now. Pre market. Um, weeklies look good. Uh, growth company, maybe new. Uh, this hasn't been. It's been public for about two and a half years. Um, you, I think you know, these growth companies channel? the only place maybe can that's you, safe to be. Could you give me like a four sigma? They have their this? own life. Can you give me like a three or? F this might even be at like five sigma. Can you give me like a sigma channel on this one on the upside? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, uh, I think on a weekly one hundred five is a pretty good resistance. One hundred five on on the upside, downside about seventy. Uh, on a more short-term daily basis, uh, I'd say uh, 103. 103 would be a resistance, and the downside would be. Hold on, I'm, uh, hold on, I'm not getting good here. Let me see. Uh, on, give me a second. There we go. Okay, I'm, I'm focusing in on this area. Okay. Uh, uh, go in. Go. Go about 80. Go about 80. Don't let you. You possibly want to buy that 80. Get rid of it or at 103. It's pretty wide, and it's widening very fast. Fari, right, let's move back into your wheelhouse here because I know you like to watch the bigger movers there. Are you watching LinkedIn? It's starting around. It started to catch a bid there yesterday, and now we got JP Morgan adding it to its focus list here this morning, putting a $300 price target on LinkedIn. What are your thoughts here, LNKD, as it starts to move back into this gap area when it gap down from its earnings report? Yeah. Yeah, it, the weeklies are beginning to slowly come back, uh, ever painfully. That was a big move down. Um, we didn't play it. Uh, actually, of all the social networking platforms, uh, LinkedIn is probably the most uh, valuable one in sense of uh, uh, who's involved, and it's a, it's people looking for connect you know, networking and looking updating resumes. And looking, you know, what else is out there, and maybe even learning from uh, changes in technology, what have you. There are different groups there, and so forth. I'm a member of a few of them, uh, some like algorithm trading, and so forth. Um, so I, I think it's it's a company to grow and and and, and be relevant, uh, unlike our dear friends over at Twitter. Uh, in terms of stock price, uh, yeah, there was a big drop there on the earnings, but that was five weeks ago. And uh, a lot of traders have short memories. We're beginning to come back. Uh, unfortunately, the way this thing moved, we have a very unusual uh, explosion to downside on the volatility. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, the vol volatility to upside, the price to the downside, and your sigma channels get skewed a big time. Now this stock con continuously does that. Why? Because there's gap ups and gap downs. The last gap up it had was also the last prior earnings report on the, second, on the 5th of February. If you go that, you'll see the same pattern. And then in between, it hardly does anything. Mm. So this is just being, it's a kind of a stock that, you know, four times a year, it does massive repricing, and then it's very low volatility until the next event. Now, you can add to this uh, risk of news, which is not EPS, you realize that you know, it could be any cycle. But I... We have stayed away from playing the LinkedIn. Just want to let you know that. It's just very weird Sigma channels. Okay, we've been on the line with Fari Hamzy, founder of Hamzy Analytics. He joins the show every Wednesday, bringing his wealth and knowledge and aggressive equity options and index futures trading and uh, also his great personality. Fari, thanks for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you again next week. Always a pleasure. Talk to you guys next week. Thanks, Fari.